Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Ramirez. I'm a market strategist with Moomoo and uh, it's great to be seeing you all. Um, today uh, we're hoping it to be interactive so please ask questions that you do have and I will propose to answer all your questions at the end of the webinar. So with a bit of luck we might get through the content in about 30 minutes and then leave 15 minutes for Q&A. Just to give you a little bit of background about myself, I'm a strategist. What does that mean? It means uh, I survey the markets and I guess map out where I see opportunity uh, in terms of sectors and in terms of stocks to watch as well. But as always, uh, everything in markets and as a strategist starts with understanding the macroeconomic landscape. And a key theme and thread for today will be to understand what is going on in the market uh, because that can dictate what is likely to happen over the next 12 to 18 months. The other thing that I want you to take away from today uh, when you are embarking on your stock picking journey is that the markets are forward looking. And that is what is happening today um, uh, regardless of what is happening, the market is thinking what is going to be happening in 12 to 18 months. So that's the first thing to take away. The other thing that I will say I want you to take away is um, a lot of investors have a longer term view when investing and I encourage you to keep that in mind. I remember that Warren Buffett has said that he wouldn't invest in a company for five minutes unless he wanted to hold it for 10 years. So keep that in mind. Let's get underway. So just a little bit of ground rules today. Everything that you hear is general in nature, of course not to be taken as advice. So we don't want anyone going out and saying Jessica said I should invest in this or uh, Mumu's Jessica said I should buy this. Uh, no, the purpose of today is just to make you aware of opportunities and where we see opportunities in the market ahead. So let's get to the basics first. How do you pick a stock? Well, this is a question that I'm asked a lot by journalists. Uh, so being a market strategist, it often means that I'm in uh, on television. Um, you'll hear me on radio, radio tonight on Channel 9's uh, 2GB uh, talking about what is happening in markets and where we see opportunity. Uh, and this is something that's, um, that's pretty prevalent in my role. So not only helping people like you, uh, but also helping the media understand what's going on so they can convey that to the masses. So how do you pick a stock? Well, what I would encourage you to do is just to take a measured approach. So regardless of uh, leaving today, I want you to uh, think about, you know, in six months time, 12 months time, how do you pick a stock based on what's going on in the market? So the first thing to do is Peter Lynch says, you can have one up on Wall Street if you become observational. Now, what does that mean? So if you're walking down the street, you might have noticed more EVs on the road than you saw three months ago. So that might mean, hey, I've got a light bulb moment. I'm going to think about um, watching the thematic of electric vehicles. Then you want to think about, is that sector that I've picked, say electric vehicles, is that sector growing? Well, I know, tick, uh, we don't yet have high EV penetration in Australia. Uh, we know only 10% of the cars on Australian roads are electric vehicles. And we know the way the world is going, the government in, say, 20 years' time wants all of our cars on our roads to be electric. So that would be an example of a way to validate if a theme that you've picked or a sector is growing. The third tip for you, ladies and gentlemen, is to identify a company in that sector if it's growing. Let's take Tesla, for example. We know Tesla's market share has been growing exponentially over the past five, 10 years, for example, and that has manifested in its share price because we know earnings growth drives share price growth. On our app, on Moomoo, for example, you can see if a company is gaining market share. 
So you can have a look at Tesla, you can have a look at BYD, you can have a look at NEO, and then you can see who is gaining market share. You know, the larger the market share, the more earnings that company would likely have. And, you know, there's plenty of examples of monopolistic companies um, that you can look at uh, as well that kind of fit into this cohort. Then tip number four is to look into their financials. I mentioned a tip, earnings. Earnings drives share price growth. So if you are looking for long-term share price growth, I'd say long-term depends on your time frame. Your time frame for long-term might be six months. It might be 12 months. But so you want to see if the company is growing earnings. And if they're growing earnings and profitability in the face of rising interest rates. So we know companies that are seeing the most earnings at the moment uh, are not necessarily at this minute, quarter on quarter, they're not in the EV space. So if you are looking for a short-term gain, yeah, a short-term gain right now, an example might not be to look at EVs, but it might be to look at what's growing in value. We know oil prices are rising. So the next quarter, we're probably going to see some of the biggest jumps in earnings, in financials, so earnings, revenue uh, in energy companies. So that's an example of validating if a company's financials are growing in that sector. Again, just taking the financial example on Moomoo's app, you can quickly see at a very quick glance, if you go onto the company's fundamental section of our website, yes, top-down method, great uh, point there. Thank you very much uh, for putting in your comments. Um, yeah, so uh, you can easily see if a company's earnings are growing. And also, uh, don't forget on that section of our app on Moomoo, you can see what the market is telling us. Remember, the market is forward looking. So we're looking for what the analysts are saying, what their earnings are going to grow for in the next 12 months. Again, if you are looking for long term, that's something to consider. Rounding it all out, tip number five is to just validate your stock selection with what the experts are saying. Consensus, right? When we talk about consensus in the industry, what does it mean? It's obviously what the market is saying. So uh, on our Apple Moomoo, uh, which we can touch on later at the end of this presentation, we'll show you how you can actually get to find those, um, uh, find the consensus or find what Analysts say like um, JP Morgan, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, UBS, what they're saying about the stock you've picked. And you can easily see on our app if uh, the stock is a buy, sell or hold as well as their price targets. Now, this looks like uh, a bunch of words on a page, but just bear with me. So this is to, is to I guess, uh, dumb down the stock selection if you just want some ideas to walk away with and not listen to the rest of the presentation. This might be uh, something for you to consider. So look, if you don't want to pick stocks yourself, this is something to consider. Two ideas. I always say to someone, if they don't know where to start when investing, they don't want to go down the rabbit hole of getting to know a company's financials, the first thing to do is consider investing in a company you know. Let's take Apple, for example. Apple shares are one of the worst performers this month in the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones is the biggest 30 stocks in the US, right? Uh, so we know if you take a long-term view on Apple, uh, you'd theoretically be buying a company with growing fundamentals and a company that's got very sticky clients right so what are the biggest growth drivers over the long term for apple that haven't seen revenue traction yet you could argue that hasn't been appreciated um, by the market yet well i've mentioned a couple there virtual reality headsets um, and augmented reality headsets they're not making any money from this yet uh, so you could argue that if you bought into Apple today, for example, you'd be buying into a company that hasn't yet experienced the earnings growth of that key driver. Another thing, the last point on idea one there, you can see Apple's EV. Who's heard of Apple's EV? Apple's electric vehicle? Well, we all haven't. But we do know that they have told the market that they are going to be launching their EV potentially around 2026. And you can bet your bottom dollar, ladies and gentlemen, Apple's probably want to take market share from 
Tesla. So that's again an example of how to just be observational, thinking about a company that you know and thinking about where future earnings will come from. I did too. If you don't want to pick a stock, you can invest in the largest 100 tech stocks in the US. That's called the NASDAQ 100. So we know this year the NASDAQ 100 has seen a pretty cracking rally. That's on the back of the AI hype. You can see we've highlighted the NASDAQ 100 is up 35%. You can see that here. I don't know if you can see my mouse uh, moving there. Uh, but some of the biggest names uh, in the NASDAQ 100 are those names that we know and trust. You know, I've just mentioned Apple. You've, of course, got Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Tesla. Uh, but we know a lot of these companies are kind of at the at the you know, at the forefront of AI, right? And, uh, you know, you've got Microsoft there. They have come out and said that they are the biggest AI company because of that $10 billion investment that they've made. But we'll get to more on AI. Notice trends, ladies and gentlemen. So we spoke about stock picking. Why do we want to notice trends? Because what you're seeing at the moment is the biggest pullback that we've seen in markets on a monthly basis since December. Have a look top left. We can see the NASDAQ 100 is down almost 7% this month. It's down almost 7%, right? As I mentioned, Apple is down significantly. They're down 11%, right? And then you've got the little Aussie battler, the ASX 200. It's down about 4%. Diving into the detail, the biggest ASX 200 is the, is the measure of the biggest 200 stocks on the ASX. And then you've got down in the doldrums, a stock that hit a brand new record all-time low today, and that's Star Entertainment. They're down 30%. But what I want you to think about is what we've highlighted below. Who at the moment is, I guess, singing the song Wake Me Up When September Ends? Because we all know September is the worst month for equities, and that's because dividends are paid out. Um, so the most dividends are paid out globally are in September. So of course, a company's share price is going to be depressed. So a lot of people uh, have a little bit of fear coming into them when they see their portfolio down, right? But you could remember the Warren Buffett adage, be, be hungry, as in be greedy, when people are fearful. Um, and I guess be fearful when others are greedy. So what does that mean? You might want to be thinking about taking profits when the market is getting pretty toppy. So you can see uh, the market, this is the All World Index, which I'm highlighting at the top right. Uh, the All World Index, uh, we know, hit record highs last year. And then guess what? The Federal Reserve, the biggest central bank in the world, said that they're going to keep on rising interest rates. So markets continue to, I guess, take a hit because why would why would a market, uh, which is essentially an amalgamation of a whole bunch of companies, um, take a haircut when rates are rising? Well, it's because, of course, profitability gets eroded in most companies, particularly tech companies, because they carry more debt than the average company because they're innovators. Uh, so that is something to consider. I just want to uh, also draw your attention to the key reasons why markets are pulling back. So someone has mentioned the business cycle. Yes, it's important to notice where we are in the business cycle, so thank you for your comments. But the reason that markets are pulling back right now is uh, we are seeing the lag effects of rate rises. We do have the Federal Reserve coming out saying they're going to continue to hike interest rates and probably keep interest rates higher for longer. We also know we learned this week um, US consumers joined Australian consumers and guess what? We've depleted all of our savings that we accumulated in the pandemic. We've also got bond yields rising. Markets don't like it when bond yields rise, do they? Um, and we've got oil prices at their highest level since November last year. And guess what? Utility bills, electricity bills are getting higher as well. So that's why we're saying we're thinking that markets 
could potentially uh, continue to fall for now, uh, but we are starting to see a lot of dip buying take place. What I've highlighted to the right um, is what's called a chart, and this just re reflects um, how the share market is tracked since 2020 last year. Uh, the All World Index is in, uh, this is a measure of all the stock markets around the world, the biggest companies around the world. Um, and you can see that we hit that high back in December and then we started to pull back. Uh, sorry, pardon me, that was 2021. And then um, markets are now starting to taper off um, in September. But what I wanted to point out is the relative strength index and the moving average convergence divergence. These are two technical indicators that are suggesting that selling is kind of a bit overdone now. So this is why uh, we're probably gonna see some dip buying take place and October is traditionally a time when we see markets start to bounce back. So that's something to consider. Again, just highlighting that point here, um, the market is indicating that it's uh, could be in oversold territory. And we know then the market has crossed this line. You can see of all the periods that I'm highlighting here, after the market has hit that bottom green level, we've subsequently seen a rally. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm just making you aware that the market could be due for a rally. And this is why we're seeing sophisticated investors buy the dip. So there's two ETFs that I want you to consider. So we spoke about stock picking, we spoke about what markets are doing. Now, this is where sophisticated investors are putting their money. Exchange traded funds, if we have a look at all those flows globally, it can really tell us a really interesting story. And that is two things. So value companies, we can see at the top left. So value companies, uh, are companies that are thought to be undervalued by the market relative to the broad market. So we know companies that are classified as value see uh, reoccurring cash flow. So you've got ExxonMobil, one of the world's biggest oil and gas companies. You've got JP Morgan Chase, uh, obviously the biggest US bank. And you've got Johnson & Johnson, Chevron, another oil and gas giant, Procter & Gamble, um, if you've got children, uh, you'd know about their nappies uh, and Merck. So these are companies, again, that have got typically uh, loyal customers and high recurring cash flows. Why am I pointing this out? Well, we've seen a very large amount of institutional investors buy into this index. The index, which you can buy on our platform, is called IWD. It's the Russell 1000 Value ETF Index, and it's the largest 1000 US companies that are thought to be deemed as value. So that's something to consider. Um, do we think that the market could potentially pull back further? Well, uh, you could argue yes, but it is really important to highlight that we are seeing sophisticated investors buy into the market at these levels. What is probably more um, alarming, um, not alarming, but um, is worth drawing attention to is uh, quality companies. And these are companies that have a high return on equity. They've got stable year on year earnings and low debt. So we see that quality outperforms the market in a period of a downturn. And that is purely because they've got the most uh, reoccurring cash flow and uh, relatively uh, good ratios of earnings to debt. So, and this is kind of what you want. You want to be having a position of your portfolio in a quality company. And if you don't want to pick a quality company or you don't know where to start, you can look at these ETFs as examples. Again, just reiterating, um, sophisticated institutional investors uh, have been buying into these two ETFs this September when we've seen the market pull back. As we start at the beginning of this presentation, we've seen the biggest pullback in markets since last December. Big pullbacks overall, but lots of buying in these two ETFs.
Now let's get to what you came for, uh, the investment things that we like uh, and where we'll probably see long-term money, long-term macroeconomic funds flow into and uh, long-term share price growth. Emphasis on the long-term. So the first theme that I want you to consider is the green switch. Uh, we know this is not going away anytime soon and that is um, that is because the EIA, the International Energy Agency, has vowed for the 31 countries in that group to be emission free by 2050. So what is uh, diving to the detail of that? What is really driving uh, or a key component of, um, of economies balance sheets uh, increasingly is uh, how how that EV target or how that emission free target is being reflected is a lot of countries, example the US, are putting a large amount of their government uh, spending towards EVs. So one trillion dollar inflation reduction act, a lot of that one trillion dollars, uh, not a lot, but uh, about 50 million uh 50 billion dollars rather 50 billion dollars uh, in the us has been put towards evs but overwhelmingly uh the biggest ev growth has been seen in china we can see that at the on the left hand side of the screen sorry my terrible face was hogging that slide there um, you can see uh, that China has got the largest exponential growth of EVs. So that is something to consider and the EV growth in China is second to none around the world. Uh, so make no mistake, we're going to see a lot more uh, growth uh, in EVs uh, because of the reasons that we're going to highlight now. So the EU, the EU, uh, this is, a, there's a lot of words here, but you can take away these slides. We're putting these slides and this recording on our website in due course. But what I want you to take away from this is two things. Uh, number one, uh, we are seeing a lot of countries ban fuel car sales by 2050. Who's banning fuel car sales first? Well. Uh, the, the Scandinavian countries, South Korea as well. So from 2025, we're pretty close. Uh, Norway and South Korea, you will not be able to buy a petrol car. So if you want a Jaguar, a hotted up V8 car, you won't be able to buy that V8 car in South Korea or Norway. And guess what? You won't be able to buy that VA muscle car in China, Canada or France from 2040. Uh, you'll only be able to buy an EV. China's EV growth, I've highlighted here, it's expected to double before 2025. Uh, that really highlights what I was talking about on the previous slide. Taking away, um, Oh, another takeaway here is that China, the EU and the US, those three countries uh, alone or three areas, are expected to hit EV penetration of 60% by 2030. So that's pretty alarming. Again, when we're thinking about a sector to look at that's likely to see long-term earnings growth, uh, this is it. Um, Something else to consider as well is not just EVs. It's the key components that go into an EV. And who knows the most expensive part of an EV? Um, if you can just write your comments in there, that'd be great. But I'm probably sure you already know about, depending on what EV you buy, about 30 to 40% of the price of an EV is a lithium ion battery. So, we know a lot of economies and a lot of car makers are spending a lot of their, yep, great, great, great comments. Thank you for putting your comments in. Um, a, lot of, um, a lot of the funds are being put towards uh, battery components. So 30% so of the amount of car maker spending, pardon me, my face is in the way again, 30% uh, of spending uh, that car makers are putting towards this space is towards batteries. 
Who's the biggest battery player in the world? Cattle, China's cattle. It's called Contemporary Amperex C-A-T-L. Uh, you can't buy that in Hong Kong. Or you can only buy that in China. Um, and it's only available to sophisticated investors, but you can basically invest in ETFs uh, that back the EV theme. There's plenty of those on the market. Um, and there's plenty of, of course, car makers uh, that you can invest in, including uh, one that um, you've rightly mentioned there in the comments, uh, BYD. So BYD is China's biggest EV maker. So Tesla and BYD have been going neck on neck in terms of EV sales. So they're just two examples if you want to think about a, a long-term company. NEO is also in the mix as well. That's something to consider. Also, I want you to consider, ladies and gentlemen, um, lithium. Lithium has been, um, over the past five years, have, has been taking off a, taking off like a red rocket. But uh, we've seen a significant pullback in the lithium price because of oversupply. But I want you to consider if you are investing in lithium for the long term, uh, we do know South Korea, we do know China's, Pardon me, I'm not very good with my Mandarin. Uh, China's, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a company in China that are investing heavily into solid state batteries. Solid state batteries are aiming to replace lithium ion batteries. We know Tesla, we know Ford, we know GM. They're already starting to use solid state batteries in their EVs and less lithium ion batteries. Why? Well, because they lower the carbon footprint, and this is what I'm highlighting and talking about if you cast your eyes down the bottom right. They lower the carbon footprint by two-thirds, uh, but they do need a lot more lithium, 35% more lithium. That's another takeaway there. So I spoke about uh, the lithium price pulling back, um, and here's a chart that basically reflects the share price pullback of Tesla um, as well as BYD, as well as the lithium price. So we can see it's all a matter of supply and demand. We know uh, prices don't move in a straight line, but if you are looking for um, a long-term investing friend, then I'd say that this is one to consider. So the average EV, if you have a look down the bottom right, the average EV does need about 51 kgs of lithium. A large amount of aluminum or aluminium is also required to make a EV lightweight. So about 250 kilograms of aluminium is needed for the average EV. So when you're thinking about EVs, what I'm trying to say is don't just think about lithium, think about the other metals that you need. Again, just using this information when you are thinking about companies to invest in. What I'm trying to say is it's not just Tesla and BYD that are companies to think about when you're thinking about lithium. A great way to also think about your investing is to use Moomoo's app. Now we've got something called the industrial chain. So if you are thinking about the EV sector in totality, have a look at Moomoo's industrial chain um, section of our app and it will just get you thinking about or brainstorming the other key components, the other sectors, the other type of companies that are benefiting from the EV pivot. So plenty of takeaways there. Copper, I spoke about copper. So copper, we uh, we do like copper. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, copper is also used as a proxy for economic growth. So we know the copper price has pulled back quite heavily because of uh, China's recovery taking much longer than expected. And we're also seeing a lot of concerns in China's property sector, and we don't believe uh, the concerns will be alleviated until possibly next year. The reason I say that is because in January next year, ladies and gentlemen, China's property sector will need to make a lot of their payments for debt 
in January. And that's on the question. But if you are thinking about long-term investing themes, keep copper on your radar. Who is the biggest copper company in the world? One of them is BHP. Why I want you to think about copper um, is because a lot of copper is required for China and India's urbanisation. So 43% of copper uh, demand is from the building sector. Uh, we do know if you think about EVs, 20% of global copper demand comes from transportation. Basically, there is a copper deficit that's expected for 2040. That's something to keep on your radar. One of my favourite investment themes, uh, one of our CEO's favourite invest investment themes, that's Toby Wong, uh, one of our favourite investment themes is AI. So why is that? Well, it's probably going to be the biggest investment opportunity, I think, uh, for our generation. Why? Well, we do know that a lot of uh, companies are investing heavily into this theme and we're probably going to increasingly see governments put money into this theme as well. If we talk about the compound annual growth rate, we're talking about 42%. Who are the companies that are spearheading AI at the moment? Um, so I mentioned down the bottom, I mentioned Microsoft. Uh, but China, just a couple of weeks ago, China commissioned uh, Beidou. They also commissioned Tencent and uh, Tencent's time to start working on the first rollout of public sector AI for China. So when you're thinking about AI companies, who are investing the most? It's not just the Magnificent Seven in the US. It will increasingly be those giants in China as well. So if you are thinking about long-term thematics, think about that. So um, is AI overhyped? Uh, someone just pointed that, uh, that out. Uh, no, I don't think AI is overhyped. In fact, I would encourage you to think about the AI opportunity for the long term seeing very low penetration. And we can see Bloomberg has supplied um, where will spending go um, and when will, where will revenue come from. Um, so we haven't really reached the tip of the iceberg. Um, so that is something to think about. And I just want to say that and articulate that in a different way. So we do know, uh, if you can have a look um, here, so you can see uh, the compound annual growth rate, uh, as in um, for where AI revenue will come from, so which sectors are likely to generate the most revenue. You can see software AI revenue is expected to grow by almost 70%. So that is something to consider. If you can just take away one thing from this slide, all it's telling us is there's lots of unforeseen revenue that the market has not expected in AI. And AI is not just a one-trick pony, uh, but we do know if you look at where spending is at the moment in AI, bottom right, AI spending only accounts for 1% of current IT spending, 1%, right? Where will it be in the future? It'll probably be 10%. So that is something to consider. So there are uh, AI ETFs that you can invest in on our platform, um, or you can pick some of the companies that we've spoken about that are investing heavily in AI. Chip makers. So we all know um, NVIDIA has been one of this year's market darlings. And why is that? Well, it's because NVIDIA is the biggest supplier of chips that train AI models. We do know, as I said earlier, earnings drives share price growth. Uh, so a lot of you are talking about Tesla. Uh, so Tesla's earnings Q on Q, uh, their growth um, is a bit lacklustre compared to NVIDIA. 
very different industries, chalk and cheese. I just want you to look at these compound growth rates, 50% year on year growth. So 50% year on year is, is where they see their revenue. This is NVIDIA, where they see their revenue going. So I've highlighted that here. So that is something to consider. Another takeaway here, consider that a lot of the chips that are produced by the likes of NVIDIA, Intel, Micron, a lot of these chips are only going into data centers. But what we want you to consider is what will happen once these chips are used in our everyday devices, AI chips in your smartwatches, AI chips in your laptops and in your mobile phones. So again, just thinking about long-term trends, long-term trends being your investment friend. So according to the ASX investment study, 40% of you, 40% of Aussies, 40% of us who live in Australia want to get an income when we invest. An income, an income stream is typically in the way of a dividend. Some people call it a distribution. I just want to highlight over the past 12 months, where have we seen the biggest payout of dividends? Well, if you have a look on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see these are the biggest payout uh, companies in terms of dividends year on year. The yield is what they call it that. Uh, so if some of you aren't really familiar with what a yield is, basically we know the cash rate is 4.1% in Australia, meaning if you invest your money or keep it at the bank, you're probably getting 4.1%. But if you invest in a company, you're getting growth, share price growth, depending on what company you invest in, right? You're ideally getting share price growth over the long term, but you're also getting a dividend. And what is a dividend? It's a payout of the company's earnings after they've, uh, you know, after they've met all obligations and then they've recorded a profit um, and uh, then they've paid that out in a dividend or distribution. So Whitehaven Coal, uh, we know Australia's biggest coal company, they've paid out a dividend of about 11%. Um, if you have a look at the right hand side of the screen, if stock picking is not for you and you want to have a part of your portfolio, um, a part of your portfolio in something that's managed, that investment manager is looking at every day and they're investing that money for you. Let's say if you put $500 into the top one on the screen, that's Barrow Hanley's Global Share Fund, right? Let's say if you invested that, invested in that under the ticker code GLOB, um, you'd be getting the share price growth of the best stock picks of the perpetual group over the long term, but you'll also be getting paid a dividend to your bank account every quarter. If you want a dividend paid to you every month, um, the bottom right-hand side might be one to look at. So uh, beta shares pay out a dividend or a distribution every month to your bank account. Uh, per year, that dividend is, is almost 10%, as we can see. What about high-yielding ETFs? So everyone, uh, I'd say 90% maybe, uh, that's probably a bit ambitious, but about 50% uh, of you have mentioned Tesla. We know Tesla is the most bought stock um, globally. And the reason for that is obviously uh, their, their growth. Uh, they were the first um, EV company on the scene and they've got the most market share, right? Uh, they're the most bought EV in the US. So how do ETFs come into play? Well, have a look at this top ETF that I've mentioned on the screen. This has generated a dividend yield of 55%. I'll just say that again in case uh, you didn't hear that correctly. They've paid out a dividend of 55%. That's pretty significant. So we're running out of time, but I just want you to consider if you are looking for something for the long term, 
You might not be looking um, at share price growth or capital growth and you want a regular income. If you want to think outside the square, you want more risk, um, then this might be a way to approach getting a regular income stream. So these are ETFs that are listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So the top one, uh, as we can see, it's called the Yield Max Tesla Option Income ETF. So its primary objective of this ETF, so you'd buy that ETF under the ticket code TSLY, you'd buy that one ETF and then you would typically get a dividend paid to you every quarter. So they, they're they basically the fund manager or the investment manager is basically investing in this and using options and returning options in way of a yield paid to you. So again, something to consider. You don't just have to buy Tesla's shares to be a part of the Tesla thematic, but you can also get an income stream by virtue of investing in a proxy that tracks Tesla. A bit complicated, the takeaway here is you can invest in a high risk ETF and get an income stream. Again, just reiterating, 55% um, dividend yield has been paid out over the past 12 months for this ETF. So we're almost running out of time. I, um, I would like to just take you through how you can exercise some of your stock picking using our platform. Obviously, you all know uh, because you're a part of the Moo community and thank you for being a customer of ours. Uh, you probably know that you can trade stocks with us 24 hours uh, a day, five days a week. We're one of, um, I guess, uh, only a few that can do this. Uh, we're Australia's first, in fact, uh, that give people the opportunity. So 100 60 stocks you can buy in the US. The advantage of this is during earnings season. We know in earnings season, if you want to swing trade, if you want to swing trade, you want to find a company that has beat earnings expectations. When a company beats earnings expectations, their share price drives higher. NVIDIA is an example that we've mentioned there. NVIDIA shares pop 20%. So again, just reiterating that, driving a message home. A company's shares around earnings season will not move if a company if a company announces their profit grew, if a company's um, if a company's earnings fell, that's not going to drive their share price. A beat will will drive their share price. As in, did Nvidia beat what the market or is in what the average Earn with the average analyst, remember that's called consensus, did they beat the expectations of Wall Street? If they did, their share price will probably grow. Does this apply for Singapore? Yes, this applies worldwide. This this what we're talking about, earnings uh, growth or earnings outperformance drives share price growth. The stocks that we've mentioned are that you can trade 24.5 are US stocks only, not Singapore stocks. Institutional tracker. I don't know if anyone has used this. Put your comments in this in the comment section. Institutional tracker is a great way to see what institutions are buying and selling. Example, Berkshire Hathaway. I don't know if you've used our app recently, but you can probably see that Berkshire Hathaway recently increased their position in Occidental Petroleum. The Occidental Petroleum uh, holding is mentioned at the top right here. We can see that is what I'm highlighting here. Occidental Petroleum, the biggest uh, US, uh, one of the biggest oil producers with uh, drill rigs in the ground. Um, so you get to see what these institutions are buying, what they're holding, what they're selling, and uh, how much of that stock they have as well in their portfolio. So I mentioned um, earnings, right? Around earnings season, if you want to swing trade, you really want something that you can rely on, um, and that is our earnings hub. Our earnings hub is a great way that you can get a quick glance to see what companies have reported. And as I said, uh, if they've met expectations, that's really important. If they've exceeded expectations, 
exceeded expectations, again, their share price will grow. If they underwhelm, if they deliver sour grapes, the share price will probably fall. Use our earnings season calendar and you can bookmark companies that you want into your diary. Have a look at that. It's pretty easy to use. Analyst ratings. If you haven't used our analyst ratings, um, you can also, um, you know, Test your stock picking, um, I guess, by validating what the market thinks as well. So let's say, for example, if you picked um, Apple, for example, is Apple a good buy? I spoke about their shares being down 11% this month. Are they a buy? Well, about 89% um, of analysts who cover Apple say it's a buy for the long term. Again, analyst ratings are always for a 12-month period. So that's something to keep on your radar as well. Um, if you've ever used our news section of our website, so down, down the bottom, we're just showing you where that is on the app here. Um, a great way to get a, at a quick glance what is happening in the, what is happening in the world. Um, so a great way just to, to keep on top of what is happening in the news. I mentioned the industrial chain, a great way to think about how can you get to know an entire sector? Who are the beneficiaries of an entire sector? So I mentioned lithium, right? So lithium, um, uh, lithium being the key component of a battery, um, of a lithium ion battery and also of a solid state battery. Again, these two, type, two types of batteries are used in Tesla cars, they're used in Ford EVs, and they'll increasingly be used in uh, many other um, motor vehicle companies who haven't yet mass scaled, rolled out EVs yet. So these are some great examples of some companies or Australia's biggest lithium companies. You know Pilbara Minerals at the top, uh, they're Australia's biggest lithium producer. You've got Olchem, Australia's second biggest lithium producer. Uh, and Lion Town, we know that they are uh, one of this year's best performers uh, on the ASX. And uh, as you probably know, Lion Town is selling their lithium to Ford and Tesla. Um, so that is something to consider as well when you are looking at stock picking. Think about the companies uh, who they're selling their lithium to. There's no point just buying a company and crossing your fingers uh, that it will go up. You want to see that a lithium company is, uh, is, is selling or has banked in a contract in, in mining. We call this an off-take agreement. If they've bunkered down a contract to sell their lithium to someone, that is good. And we know Lion Town is a great example of that. They are selling, as I said, that Lion Town is selling their lithium to Tesla and also to Ford. Uh, whereas um, Australia's Olchem Minerals, Olchem is the top third from the top here, uh, Olchem is not selling their lithium to Ford or Tesla. Again, I encourage you to have a look at our industrial chain, a way for you to get to know companies. AI tools, everyone loves a bit of AI, don't they? So look, um, I spoke about, I touched, uh, I know we are going over time, apologies, um, but I spoke about technical analysis early on. I'm looking at a chart pattern. So uh, as strategists uh, or as fund managers, it's really important to combine Fundamentals, so looking at a company's financials and also looking at technicals. This is not gobbledygook. If you combine the two, Harvard has found that if you combine the two, you will outperform the market and you have historically outperformed the market over, a par over the past five and ten years. So pick your stock. So pick your theme, pick your stock. Um, and then after you've looked at their financials, why not look at our AI section and look at the interpretation here. So on this, uh, on this, it'll basically tell you if the stock is bullish based on all the technical indicators that our app has scanned and it'll tell you if it's a good time to potentially buy the stock based on the 
technical indicators. So that is a great way to either um, to validate your stock picking as well. So I haven't really got that many questions. Um, so I'll just keep on um, clicking on. Um, another great way for you to get to know what is trending in markets is to look at what's gaining traction. And we all know a lot of platforms have got a heat map. A heat map is on most platforms across Australia and the US. Most, most platforms will tell you what sector is going up and what sector is going down on the day. That doesn't really have a great much of a, or, of a value, uh, value add to someone who is investing for the long term. If you want to invest for the long term, it's really important to see where momentum is. And if you filter on our platform, you use the top right here and you filter for a longer term horizon, you can see where a lot of money is going into, as in where the market is saying what sector is going to do well over the more longer duration. So again, interesting, encourage you to use that to see where momentum is going. Don't necessarily keep it on the day, but expand it out. I encourage you to explore this. Expand it out for over the past 10 days, 20 days. Where has the money come out of? Where has it gone? What is it telling us? And is that a catalyst for you to consider looking at a sector? Rounding it all out, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted you uh, just to remember that you can uh, can score 15 free shares uh, with Mumu. That's valued to the tune of about $6,100. Uh, so I just encourage you to use that if you're not a Mumu client or if you know anyone who wants to join our platform as well, just encourage you to have a look at that. If we don't have any questions, I will say thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, our presentation will be available on our platform in due course and available on our website. You can always keep uh, in contact with me on the Mumu app, uh, on the Mumu platform, on the Mumu app, and also reach out to me personally on Twitter and I will uh, respond to your questions and comments. Also, don't forget to follow our TikTok and our Instagram. We've got sometimes not sometimes, but every week, uh, we've got a key insight that you need to know in 60 seconds. And we also sometimes put some of my media appearances on there, as well as our Toby Wong's media appearances as well. But from everyone at Moomoo, stay safe, happy trading, and we'll see you very next time uh, for another EDM. And we probably might go a little bit deeper into uh, some key takeaways for you. But bye for now. Stay tuned and uh, enjoy the rest of your week.